from beautiful Oman, uh, Laila Hadrami, uh, Smart City Associate, RMA Advisory. Laila will be talking about DNA of our smart and sustainable cities. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's really my pleasure to be among all of you here so we can speak about one of my favorite topics. We are going to speak about our neighborhoods, so where we are really exactly living. I'm not going to say about smart cities. So let's start with my presentation there. Okay, yeah. So what I'm really going to talk today about is about the DNA of our smart cities and sustainable cities. What is the DNA of Al Medina? What is the DNA of Riyadh? What is the DNA of London, Barcelona, Muscat? So every city, it has its own DNA. So when it comes to the DNA of smart cities, we have to ask ourselves, do we have our own identity that make us uh, different, unique than the others? Because sometimes people, they say, we need to be like Barcelona, like Amsterdam. And I say, no, you have to build your city based your own identity. But you have to ask yourself, how I'm going to do that? Most of the time, we see the SDGs, right? Have you ever asked yourself why we need these SDGs? We have 17 goals. It's going actually to assess, evaluate ourselves in the way we are going to build our cities. Because the United Nations, they said 17 goals. Some countries till today, they don't have, for example, clean water. They don't have health services. They don't have education. We might have it, alhamdulillah, here, all of these services. But are, are all of these services smart? or we need to improve it. Yes, we need to make sure that it is like sustainable. We need to make sure it's innovative because every time we are developing something, we're gonna have like a new technology, right? Ask yourself five years ago, 10 years ago, how was the health sector? How was the education sector? We used just to have it like face to face, but because of COVID-19, we started having the online courses the virtual courses where we're now having the metaverse so we can have education platforms. So keep always uh, including these uh, SDGs part of your main strategy. Let me share with you uh, Oman 2040 vision. Oman 2040 vision, it has been launched uh, two or three years ago. So we are trying to align the country vision with the SDGs. And it's the same what's happening here in Saudi Arabia. What is the Saudi Arabia vision and what is our SDGs? Because this is the measurement that we are going to assess ourselves. And one of the priorities here in, uh, you know, in 2040, which is one of my favorite, is about the development of governance and sustainable cities. Because we have different cities, different regions, the same, you know, Oman and Saudi Arabia. We have very close, uh, let me say, geography, different accents. Yesterday, one of the, you know, researchers, they said, are you from Sharqiyah? I said, no, I'm from Oman. He said, oh, wow, you look just like a Sharqiyah. So even, you know, that the accent, the culture, the language, you have to take it in consideration. The people in Riyadh, they have different, for example, uh, uh, let me say culture or uh, customs from the people from Medina, right? So we always have to design our cities based on the people always make sure it's about the people. And most of the time people are coming to me and they say, we need to be smarter. To be smart is not about, you know, getting a certificate. It's about your strategy. You have to get your blueprint so you can make it very unique. So you have to think about three main things. Make it in consideration. The first thing I'm always saying, the first thing is people, people, people. So you have to say, who's my people? Why I'm going to build these hospitals? Why I'm going to build these schools? Why I'm going to build these entertainment activities? Why I'm going to build, let me say, these services? Who's going to use it? You are going to use it for your people, right? The second one will be the vision. As I said, you have Saudi vision and then link it to the SDGs. Is it aligned? Have you achieved it or not? And then we can speak about the technology. Because most of the time people will, will start speaking about the technology and always telling them technology will be the last one. So you have to make sure that you are thinking first about the people, then your vision, align it. Then you can say with the smart city indicators. And finally, you can speak about the smart city infrastructure, the smart solution, then the data, right? So that is how we can start. It's not enough to start, uh, you know, let me say, to talk about this, but we can talk uh, about it later on. And when it comes to the people, you have to think about the five main sectors, the government, private sector, academia, 
the SME startups and the individual who are the community. Who's your community, for example, in Medina? You have, Medina, for me, it's like a holy city. It is the city of Prophet Muhammad. You have visitors from all around the world. So when you design some of your smart solutions, you have to think about these visitors, right? Coming from different nationalities. You have to think about the language, about their cultures, about their experience. So this is how we're going to succeed. You have to make this as priority in every project that you are going to design it for Medina or any smart city projects. So let me take you, when we say about the DNA of our smart cities, I'm having here different photos from Oman. This is Al Hamra. Al Hamra is, uh, Ms. Fatli Abreen is one of the old villages in Oman. It has like mud houses. And I'm sure this scenario, we have it in most of the countries. Some small villages, because of the innovation, it becomes abandoned, no life on it. So we have to make sure how we can bring life to these cities. So this is what happened in Misfat al -Abriyin. Actually, it was not the government who started. Sometimes we need champions who lead the change. He was like one person from that village, and he said, I'm going to innovate the mic houses so I can rent it, for example, uh, for gas or make it as a coffee shop. At the beginning, everyone fight with him, his community, the government, but he was insisting to complete that dream. And as soon as he succeed, more visitors started to go to that city. You know what happened today? 60% of the, that village now innovated. And now it is one of the crowded villages in Oman. When we have VIP people visiting Oman, they have to take them to that village. Although it is far away from Muscat, around two hours, but now it's becoming a very successful story. So sometimes we need uh, these champions who are going to lead the change so we can have best practices. And this is another city, it is Nizwa. It's a historical city, actually it's my hometown and this photo is by me so I can show off. So Nizwa learned from Musfat al-Abriyi and they also started to innovate the mud houses. Because the mud houses, when it was abandoned, it became a place for the people, the robberies, the ones who are making crimes and so on. But now it's becoming very popular. Now it's becoming so much touristic and so many people are going to Nizwa. We have also, uh, and by the way, in Nizwa, we have so many people who are driving their bikes. When I say the DNA of that city, only people from Nizwa who are just uh, driving their bikes. So we have to think how we are going to improve the living in this city. We can use the scooters, the electrical scooters, so we can replace it with the one with the diesels. That's how we can say saving the environment to be friendly. We have the coastal cities because the people who are living next to the beach, they are different than the people who are living in the desert, right? So we have to make sure how we can uh, think about the people in the desert from the people on the beaches because it also depending on the jobs itself, their behaviors. And one of the things that I really loved, you know, uh, in my last visit in, uh, to one of the desert camps, they're using the renewable energy, the solar. So this is how we can, because when we are speaking about the smart cities, we have also uh, to bring all the renewable energy solutions to make, to improve, uh, let me say, the environment atmosphere. So it's not enough to speak about all of this together, but I'm just giving you a brief how we can uh, design it based on the DNA of every city. So this is also about when people are asking me what are kind of solutions that we can start with it in our cities. I'm always telling them it's about the services that we as a people, we're gonna look for it. For me as you know, a woman, I would definitely uh, would love to have also the smart gas. I don't want to cook and then say, ah, I don't have any more gas, right, the woman? So just uh, get emergency, please bring me gas. So we need to have this automated as soon as possible. This is kind of services. If we want to be smart, don't think about another city, what uh, they're doing. Think about the people, what they really want. So it's about the smart utilities management. So we can have smart energy meters, smart water, smart transportation, smart lighting. Are the lights in this uh, hall it's, uh, smart or not smart? So this is how we can start in our own cities. So when it comes to the also uh, sustainability, sustainability of smart cities projects, it's about the partnership between the government and the private sector. This needs also a full workshop to talk about it. What are the different PPP models? When I was working in the private sector uh, with the smart meters, we used boot model. So 
instead of the government taking all the headache, we said, we're going to do that for you. So we build it, operate it, manage it. Then we transfer the project from eight to 15 years. That depends on one of the contracts. So we, because sometimes in the government, they are mostly uh, working when it comes to the governance regulations. So we have to take the big work for the private sector, for the startups. That's how we can have our own ecosystem. That's how we are going to succeed. And that's all what I can uh, share with you. And uh, if you'd like to talk more about the smart and sustainable cities, we can definitely have it in the uh, questions. Thank you all. Thank you very much.